The Transporter Refueled, 2015 On a typical night in 1995, somewhere in the French town of Ribera, a group of teenage girls who are prostitutes roam the streets looking for customers under the watchful eye of a local black pimp. A delivery truck rolls over and a man gets out. One of the black pimps told him to keep moving while he worked. Me too, the man said and opened fire with an assault rifle. The men are Russian Arkady Karasov or Radovoz Bukvich, and his partners Yuri, Yuri Kolokolnikov, and Leo Emisova, Lynn Kudryawski, who continue to shoot at the men, killing them. He forced his working daughters to run away. Karasov saw the man alive and let him live, warning his superiors that this territory was now theirs. When Karasov blows his whistle, a van carrying his daughters, each wearing a necklace with a knife through his heart to signify that they are his property, turns into the murder scene. Abandoned on the same street, one of the girls, Anna, Rowan Chabiner, is visibly upset by what has happened. Meanwhile, Karasov notices one of the previous French pimp's working girls, Misa Noemi Lenore, is still standing where her bosses just got murdered. Karasov asks her if she wants to work for him, and she quickly says, yes. Charmed by her ability to get in line and know her place, Karasov offers her a ride with him, implying she will be a kept woman and will not be forced to have sex like the others, and she quickly gets into the car. Karasov then yells at the others to get to work. Anna stands on the street corner, tears in her eyes. Fifteen years later, Anna is in a nice restaurant. She receives a call and tells the person on the other side of the line that the plan is in motion. A group of six local thugs in a parking garage spot a black Audi. They walk up to it, planning to steal it. Frank Martin, Ed Scray, sees this and uses his phone to open the two front doors, knocking two of them to the ground. Seeing Frank, the leader of the thugs tells him to hand over the keys. Frank says that's not going to happen. The six thugs attack Frank, and he makes short work of them using his martial arts training and using their own weapons, knives, a taser, against them. He has the leader in a headlock when he looks at his watch. You're going to make me late, Frank says. I hate being late. Frank knocks him out and drives away. Frank drives and looks at his watch, sighing. He's late. Frank picks up his father, Martin Sr., Ray Stevenson. Martin Sr. tells his son that he's late. Frank says he is only 30 seconds late, but his father counters late is late regardless of the time. As they drive off, Frank asks his dad about his retirement and Martin Sr. says he will now get 791 euros a month in retirement money. Frank gets a call with an unlisted number. His father asks if he is going to answer it. Frank shakes his head no. I don't use the phone when I'm driving, he says. Meanwhile, a Chinese woman named Chiao Wenxiayu is in a hotel room with two men waiting for Anna. One of the men, the accountant of Karasov's money, is angry that Anna is late since he is the one that pays them. Anna finally arrives and the man says they should get the party started. My sentiments exactly, Anna replies before pulling a silenced pistol out her bag and shooting the accountant and his guard in the head. Anna and Chiao get to work, setting up a line of towels that lead out of the bathroom to the bodies. Anna then adds in the body of a dead independent prostitute to fake Chiao's death, making sure to add Karasov's necklace to the body. They use lighter fluid and a dryer in running water to cause a fire and burn all three bodies past recognition. Frank and his father have dinner at his house. Frank asks what he has planned for the future. Martin Sr. he plans to buy a boat with the money he has saved up. Frank dryly comments on that despite his father working in water purification, he always worked in dangerous locations implying that Martin Sr. used that as a cover to be a soldier slash spy. Frank gets a call from the same unlisted number. Anna asks if he is willing to do a job. Frank says he doesn't take contracts over the phone and asks to meet. Anna says okay and sets a meet for 2 p.m. the next day. Meanwhile, Karasov is on his yacht, surrounded by women and his two partners, Yuri and Demisova. Misa is still there, as Karasov's loyal de facto girlfriend slash kept woman. Misa gets a call and hands it to Karasov. There has been an accident involving the accountant. Karasov and Misa meet with Inspector Bektui, Samir Gezmi, who shows him the corpses of the three bodies, saying the first two have been identified. Karasov asks why he wasted him time showing them then. Bektui then shows him the third body of a woman and asks if he recognizes one of his hostesses. 
Karasov insists he is a legitimate businessman, but Bektui counters he is not accusing him of anything, and it would be a moot point to do so since many on the force have enjoyed the company of his hostesses. Karasov makes it clear that if he does try to accuse him, he better have an army with him. Frank meets with Anna at a local restaurant and lays out his three rules. There will be no names mentioned between them, at least not real names. The deal cannot be changed once it's agreed on, and he is not to know what he is transporting. All of the rules are so he can maintain plausible deniability in case things go wrong. Anna says he will be picking up one passenger, herself, and transporting two packages for a total of 104 kilos to their destination from the Mediterranean bank in three hours. Frank agrees to the terms, and says one minute after 5 p.m. he leaves, with or without her. Frank leaves to get ready. Anna calls someone on her phone, telling them they are good to go. Meanwhile, Martin Sr. is at the store, buying an expensive bottle of wine. Frank is at a local mechanic shop, working on his car to get it ready. He calls his dad and tells him he will have to miss dinner since some things came up. Martin Sr. sees a pretty woman needing to change a flat tire, and tells his son he will just have to share dinner with someone else. Frank says that sounds good and hangs up. Martin Sr. goes up to the woman and offers to help her change the tire. When he is distracted, she pulls out a stun gun and knocks him unconscious, stuffing him in the trunk. The woman is Gina, Gabriella Wright, Anna's third and final conspirator in her plot. At 5 p.m., Frank is waiting outside the bank. Anna appears in a blue dress and a blonde wig. Frank asks where the two packages are. Anna says they will be there in a minute. Frank counts down the seconds. As he does, two other women, a Slav named Maria, Tatiana Pachkovic, and Xiao in a similar disguise as Anna, get into the car. Frank asks what is going on and Anna explains that Maria and Xiao are her packages and weigh exactly what she told them. Frank wants to bail, thinking she is changing the deal, when Maria pulls out a gun and puts it to his head. Frank is less than scared, saying that isn't the first time a gun has been put to his head. Maria replies it will be the first time someone fires it though. Needing him to move, since nearby police are getting suspicious, Anna shows him a cell phone video of his father, who they have kidnapped in order to ensure his cooperation. Frank having no other choice revs the engine and drives away from the bank with the police in fast pursuit. Despite throwing numerous police cars and motorcycle officers his way, Frank is able to evade them all, putting most of them out of commission via car crashes due to precise turns and movements. He takes the three to a parking garage where they switch cars. Anna asks why they are leaving evidence behind, but Frank says they are not, and pushes a button, blowing up the car and every trace they were in it. No.